Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. You've finally done it. You got all your ham radio portable gear together for a Parks on the Air activation. You may have even put together a checklist for yourself to ensure you didn't forget anything. Rig, check. Battery, check. Antenna and coax, check. Sounds like you have all you need, doesn't it? Well, as someone who has been practicing operating from the field for years, let me share with you a few items you might not have thought of that could make a big difference once you're out there. The following things are part of my standard field kit. The additional utility they provide improve my outdoor experiences considerably. Let's get into it. First and most importantly, you should have basic first aid capability. At the very least, Pack in hand sanitizer and bandages. A small first aid kit is an even better choice. This particular kit includes bandages, gauze, tape, antiseptic wipes, and a pair of tweezers for removing ticks. This kit cost me about $9. That's a tiny price to pay for a bit of accident insurance. My next go-to is a pair of leather work gloves to give you protection from injury, increased gripping power, and will even keep your hands warm and dry in adverse conditions. To highlight just a few use cases, I use gloves to help loosen stuck telescopic pole sections, pull picnic tables from one spot to another, and clear brush aside as I make my way across a field to a tall tree to put up my antenna wire. The gloves will prevent splinters and blisters, not to mention keeping your hands clean when things get mucky. I like to bring a compact folding chair and folding table. This may seem like an extremely obvious addition, but if you are heading to a park where you fully expect to find a picnic table, you might neglect to bring these. What will you do if there is no table? Operate from the car? That's no fun. I always have a fresh roll of electrical tape in my go bag. If rain is in the forecast, wrap up your coaxial connections tightly to prevent water ingress and SWR issues. Electrical tape can also be used to secure wire antenna radiator ends back on themselves to electrically shorten the antenna and provide a higher resonant frequency. I also use tape to fasten coax to erected telescopic poles. Next up, let's address paracord. It's a staple, of course, but you'll want to ensure you have more paracord than you think is necessary. Having extra gives you flexibility in how high up you can get your antenna and how high the ends can be off the ground. If you plan on running a dipole, you need to have twice the height of the apex of the dipole. This is because the paracord has to go up to the branch, then all the way back down to the ground again. You also want enough to tie off each end of the antenna to a support or ground peg. Don't be caught with too little paracord and have to compromise with a low to the ground antenna. If you're working with paracord, you'll want a multi-tool for cutting. The multi-tool will also provide a basic screwdriver set useful for attaching ground wires and you never know when those pliers might come in handy. Take a small tarp with you. Tarps have a multitude of uses, and once you are familiar with some of these, you'll never be without one again. A tarp can provide a clean work area, a place to sit on a wet picnic table bench, an area to kneel on dirt, grass, or muck, and of course, shelter from rain or sun. Camping stakes are useful for securing the ends of wire antennas where there are no other supports available. Another way these are employed are to fasten down the corners of your tarp if used as a shelter or as a makeshift floor on soggy soil. I put almost all my portable gear in heavy-duty Ziploc bags. The bags protect the gear while being transported, keep similar items together and separated from other things, keep small stuff from rolling off the table or blowing away, and offer protection from rain. Don't forget a small towel. You'll use the towel to wipe down anything that might have gotten wet in that brief rain shower. It's also useful 
for cleaning off dirty camping sticks before they are packed away for the trip home. Last one on my list, keep a large garbage bag with you. If you have to pack away wet, mucky stuff at the end of your activation, your car's interior will thank you for putting it all into the bag. Sure beats having to clean the car later on. That's my standard list, but I do have a bonus option for you. If you are going to be setting up your portable station in an area subject to heavy pedestrian traffic or close to where cars park, you might like this idea. Just before field day last year, I went to a local dollar store and purchased a couple of high visibility colored pool noodles. I cut them in half, then cut a slit down the side through to the hollow core. I then slid the noodle sections over the antenna support guy lines just above the anchor pegs. This helped passers-by and drivers see the guys as they approached, providing safety for the people and protection for my antennas and connected equipment. So that's my list. Did I leave anything off that you like to take? Please share by leaving a comment below. Thank you for watching. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack, get outdoors and get on the air. 73 from Tracy, VE3, TWM.